G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Up's Full Driving, we'll be looking at why you should decrease the air pressure in your tyres to increase the contact patch with the track. So, let's get into it. So why do we need air pressure in the tyre anyway, other than to keep the bottom from going flat? Well, firstly, you need to appreciate we live in a pressurised atmosphere. So at sea level, which we're not too far above here, it's about 14 and a half PSI in freedom units, or one bar conveniently in metric units, or 100 kPa, okay? But when you put pressure into the tire and you read the tire gauge, let's say the tire gauge reads 14 and a half PSI, what you've actually got in there is 14 and a half PSI over and above atmospheric pressure. So you've actually got, at that 14 and a half PSI reading, 29 PSI absolute. So the absolute pressure in there, 29 PSI, but 14 and a half PSI over and above the atmospheric pressure. Okay, now we've got the mumbo jumbo out of the way. How does the tire actually keep you up off the ground? So how do tires keep you up off the road? Well, there is a misconception out there that says the air pressure pushes you up off the road. And that's not the case at all. You actually hang from the top of the tire. Now, before you tell me, Simon, you've obviously lost your marbles and start smashing that thumbs down button, hear me out. Now, there's reinforcing running throughout the tire. In a radial tire like this one here, and most tires on four wheel drives, it runs from the bead right across the top over to the other side of the bead. Now, let's take this USB cable, for example. If I've got the load, that being the wheel, and this being the reinforcing in there, the load can hang from the reinforcing, not an issue. But if we take that flexible reinforcing and we try and push up with the load, doesn't work too well, does it? So you're actually hanging from the top of the tire. Discuss that around the campfire next time and see how far you get. Anyway, let's have a look at the various ways of measuring air pressure. So there's three main ways of measuring pressure in tires that we commonly use. Bar, KPA, and PSI. Now, bar is atmospheric pressure at sea level or thereabouts. SI unit, metric unit makes sense. KPA or kilopascals is also another metric unit. So 100 kilopascals equals one bar. So you can convert between the two reasonably easily. And don't forget kilo meaning by three. So it's actually kilopascals. So 100,000 pascals equals one bar. Again, nice and easy to convert between the two. PSI, PSI is pounds per square inch. It's an imperial or freedom unit. Um, it's what we all commonly use in Australia. It doesn't make a lot of sense being an imperial unit. Not a lot of them do. But if you look on my tire placard, there's a PSI reading. If you go to a petrol station in Australia, the gauge will read in PSI. So for the rest of the episode, I'm going to use exclusively PSI. If you think in bar, I'm sure you're smart enough to do the conversion over or KPA. So just like preschool, it's time to drag out the paint and paper. And what I'm going to do is I've measured the tread length at 45 PSI, down five PSI increments, right down to zero PSI. The way I've done that is I've painted the tread with black paint and I've put a piece of paper on the ground and I've lowered the full weight of the vehicle which in this case is about 500 kilograms per corner. And we're able to get an imprint of the tread length at various pressures. So let's have a look at the results for that. Okay, so here we go. Here are the results. The area in meters squared versus the tire pressure in PSI. Now, the tire we use is a BFG KO2, good all terrain, in a size 245, 75, 16. So it's 775 high or in the old money, 30.5 inches, a little bit under a 31 there. Now we started off at 45 PSI, and as you can see, it's about 0.03, and we progressively work our way up. And as you can see in the picture, it's starting to get bigger, 35 PSI down to 30 PSI. Now when we go from 30 PSI to 25 PSI, you can see it's starting to get larger and larger, through to 20 PSI, and then 15 PSI is a decent jump there. But have a look at the jump now from 15 PSI 
to 10 psi and 10 psi is the pressure I run in these tires on the beach in somewhere like robe in soft sand and it seems to work fine for me I barely ever get stuck now 5 psi you're probably not going to run those sort of pressures uh, except in an extreme emergency where there's an incoming tide and you only need to drive forward above the high tide mark and then you can pump your tires up again and just for chuckles we went down to zero psi as you can see here and the sheet wasn't even long enough to register the whole tread and i'll throw up a picture of that in a minute but let's get on with the rest of it so one thing i'm sure you noticed about that graph was that it wasn't linear it wasn't a straight line what i mean by that was the difference between let's say 25 psi and 20 psi gained you extra tread length but when we went from 15 psi to 10 psi we got a substantial increase in tread length and when we went from 10 psi to 5 psi in our emergency pressure we got a big heap of extra tread length so what that means for your average four-wheel driver if you're getting stuck on the beach on that beach exit or trying to get above that high tide mark and you're already at 16 psi take more tire pressure out drop it to 12 psi if that still doesn't get you out drop it to single digits go to 8 psi in your troopy we've done that in the snow and we got them out so drop your tire pressure if you're low and you're not going to drop a bead drop it even more drive until you're safe and then pump up your tires again anyway the other consideration is what's called ground pressure now in freedom units again this is measured in psi and what that means is the amount of contact patch and the weight combined so how many in this case pounds of weight you have versus the square inches or area so let's have a look at the results for that so now we have some idea what ground pressure is let's have a look at that relates to our tire pressure so our tire pressure again from zero right through to 45 psi and our ground pressure this time from zero right through to 30 psi if we start off at 45 psi we can see that's around about the 27 or 28 mark and it progressively works its way down and again the gradient starts getting steeper especially when we get down below 15 psi and heading to 10 psi and the emergency psi 5 psi i'm just driving forward and then i'll pump up my tires that's even greater in gradient than further up the line here so it's in direct correlation with your tire pressure the lower your tire pressure especially down the bottom here the greater the reduction in ground pressure so what did we learn from that the less weight and the bigger contact patch you have the less likely you are to get stuck because you've got less psi on the ground and that's why the guys in jimneys keep driving around me on the beach when i'm stuck and have the max tracks or the tread pros out anyway let's have a look at a couple of comparisons with things you'll know and what ground pressure they exert on the ground so let's have a look at a bit of a comparison with the ground pressures so here's our ground pressure in psi now your mountain bike exerts a ground pressure of about 40 psi for your average rider and an elephant because they distribute their massive weight over a lot larger area is actually less at 35 psi now our car tire at 35 psi of an internal air pressure was exerting a ground pressure of 25 psi but when we drop that same tire down to 10 psi we've got a reduction from the 25 psi down to the 16 psi so that's why it's such a great idea to distribute your weight over a larger surface area when you're driving on things like beaches and that way you've got a lot less likelihood of sinking into the sand now your average person who is this likely lad <laughs> is an average of about eight psi and of course that depends on how likely you are to walk into a hamburger shop and walk out with both hands full <laughs> and let me tell you i usually never walk out with hands empty but anyway now you're a 20 ton excavator now they have tracks so they exert a lot less pressure than even a person they're down to around about 5 psi and your snowcat that's the best of the mob usually they're down around about 1 psi 
And the reason, of course, is they need to sit on top of loose snow. Well, I certainly wouldn't have thought elephants were doing a better job as far as not getting bogged is concerned than mountain bikers, but <laughs> there you go. Anyway, what have we learned from the video? Well, for me, I've learned that the reduced tire pressure and the elongation of the tire patch is important, especially when you're at low pressures. If I'm at low pressures and I don't think I'm gonna drop a bead, and I've been down to 10 PSI in this vehicle, not an issue, and I'm getting bogged at 12, I'm gonna pull another couple of PSI out. I'm gonna benefit from the increased tread length and that'll help me distribute the load and reduce my ground pressure. Therefore, hopefully, <laughs> allow me to get out of that sticky situation away from that incoming tide. Anyway, guys, there's lots more to learn about tires. I might make up a playlist about tires specifically. I mean, different weights, front to back, uh, different widths, uh, different heights. There's lots of consideration when it comes to tires, and I don't want to make this video an hour and a half long. Anyway, guys, if you like the video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up, and if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down twice. Thanks, guys. See you in the next one. So the air pressure in the tyre allows you to hang from the top of the tyre. Now, before you smash that thumbs down button, hear me out. So there's reinforcing inside the tyre. There's a fly.